Earlier this month, the Surgeon General issued a report saying that one in seven Americans is expected to develop a substance use disorder at some point in their lives. John Schinholzer and Honestly Liller of the McShin Foundation in Virginia are on the front lines of this epidemic. Honesty, I want to start with you. What does it look like uh, in, in terms of the uptick in, in, with opioid abuse and, uh, that you see? Right. Well, at McShin, about 80% of our participants in our program are recovering from opioid addiction. It's all around the country. Um, it's a huge spike in lots of opiates, you know, prescription pain meds along with the heroin. The heroin is cheaper after you're done with the prescription pain meds. So it's more and more people getting addicted and in, to be honest with you at a very younger age um, than on average. And that's all around the nation, not just in Richmond. Tell me about your personal story. Well, I'm a person in long-term recovery from my SUD. I've um, been drug and alcohol free for over nine and a half years. I, the last, I started using when I was 12 years old. I stopped when I was 26. The last nine years of my active addiction was opio opioids and heroin. And I came to the McShin Foundation uh, when I was 26 years old with nothing. Uh, same day service, John and Carol, his wife, the Mick and McShin took me in. Um, I had nothing. I had a couple bags of clothes. I didn't have custody of my daughter, and I was practically living out of my Jeep. Now, today, my life is amazing. Uh, nine and a half years later, because of recovery and John and Carol taking a chance on me, I own a home. I'm a taxpayer. I've, I can vote. I'm a mommy. I'm a wife. And I'm the CEO of McShen. So I get to be surrounded by people that I love and I get to be able to see people change and their lives change because of recovery, that peer-to-peer, -peer, been there, done that, this is what life was, this is what life is today. So be able to s help these people and save their lives and heal their families. John, what is the most important thing a person needs who, who needs help? Well, I think the most important thing is that if you have an addiction, there is help out there that anybody can stop using drugs, find a new way to live and lose that desire. All you got to do is ask for it and hopefully you'll find the right doorway to go through and they'll be smart enough to give you the help the same day you ask for it. Hopefully that's what it will look like. But a lot of people have trouble asking for help. A lot of people oh don't Oh my get God, it. it's the hardest thing in the world is for an individual to, to come to grips with an addiction and say, look, I, I need help. What do I do? And, and a lot of times they reach out for help just to get their hands slapped. So we have to stop that as a nation. We got to start helping people. The day they ask for help, we got to give it to them instead of turning them back out in our community. What, what do you mean by getting their hands slapped? Well, a lot of times somebody will come in and ask for help from like a service provider and they'll say they'll come back in a week or two or three and the next thing you know, you go back out in the Target or Walmart and then you're a public safety threat at that point point. then the sheriff gets you. So we've got to stop streeting people and, and help them the day they ask for it to include emergency rooms in America. All across America, people are growing up in these emergency rooms, a place where they're supposed to get help for a medical condition just to be told to get out of here. So we've got to stop that as a country. We know better. We've got to do better. Uh, honesty, what you, the most important thing you mentioned was that you know, when you're talking to somebody, you can say, I was there mm -hmm. with you. What about as a, lar as a larger culture? What, do we, what does the rest of us, what, what can the rest of us do? Uh, just be a voice. It's not just those that are addicted to drugs and alcohol. It's the family members and the people in the community that have been affected. You know, er anyone can be able to help someone, you know, that has a struggling issue. I think it's really important to continually to talk about it. And if you have a voice in your local community with a policymaker, like, give them our number. Like, we're really good at what we do in the advocacy piece because it's not just, okay, help that individual. Like, how do we help them? It's healing a whole entire community and that's the nation at large. So anyone can be a voice for anything. It's just important to be educated on, you know, what you're talking about and be, been there, done that, that lived experience. We have, it's not just us in recovery, but the family members that have been affected by this disease that are speaking up and going to the General Assembly and doing what they have to do as well to fight for those that A, don't even know about recovery and those that are, you know, changing their lives. All right. Honesty and John, we really appreciate you being here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. This is amazing. Yep. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you. Thanks for what you do.